In this video, I will show you how to perform stationarity tests using the augmented Dikifula procedure. In a quarterly data from 1970 quarter 1 to 1991 quarter 4. So in total, I have 88 observations. The log of PCE is a variable I'll be considering for stationarity, but I will conduct a regression using PDI as the explanatory variable. Here on the screen is a plot of the log of PCE. And the line plot indicates to me that this series is non-stationary. You can see it has an upward trend and is not uh, reverting to its main. So that means the data generating process of this series does not evolve around zero. Another way to test whether this series is stationary or not is by conducting a regression of log of PCE on log of PDI, ln PDI as my explanatory variable and observe the value of my R squared vis-a-vis -vis the W. Watson statistic. So here is the output for this regression. We are only concerned about the value of the R squared in this case because we want to see whether the value of the R squared is lower or greater than W. Watson statistic for us to know whether this regression is spurious or not. From the last video I did, make sure you check out my blog and my YouTube videos. I showed you how you can compute the W. Watson statistic. So the W. Watson statistic for this is 5, 0 0.5700. The W. Watson statistic for this is 0 0.5700. And clearly, we can see that we have just conducted a spurious regression because the value of the R squared is greater than that of Dobbin Watson's statistic. So this is a clear evidence that we have only conducted a spurious regression for the fact that the series we are working with are non-stationary. It doesn't matter whether the coefficient of the variable is significant or not, as it is in this case, we can see it's very statistically significant. But because the R squared is greater than the value of the Dobbin statistic, we cannot accept this result. This is a spurious regression and everything about it should be discarded. So the next thing to do again is to subject it now to the ADF test for stationarity and see whether indeed the series is stationary or not. Under the augmented DK Fuller test, there are three different model specifications. But the model specification that we are using for this tutorial is the one that has the intercept only. And this is how the model is constructed. You can see it on the screen. Here we have the difference of the dependent variable. Alpha naught is the intercept. And we have theta. Theta is the parameter that we are estimating for the lag of the dependent variable. Alpha 1 is the parameter of the lag of the difference of the dependent variable. The null hypothesis that we are testing is that theta equals zero. That is, the data needs to be different to make it stationary. Against the alternative hypothesis that theta is negative, in other words, the data is stationary and does not need to be different. So that is the hypothesis that we are working with. And theta in this case is the lag of the dependent variable. In this column, column D, is where I have computed the lag of the dependent variable. Column C, I also computed the difference of the dependent variable. So I'm going to show you how I derived column C. Let me create another column here, just a column D here, to show you how I created column C. So it's going to be equals B3 minus B2. I bring my mouse back here and I double click. And you can see that um, what I have in column D is exactly what is in column C. Because this is formulated, there are formulas all through, Excel will not run it. So all I need to do is to remove the formula. I highlight the entire cell, I click copy, I go to paste, I click on paste special, I click on values to remove the formula and I click OK. So if I click back again, all the formulas are gone as if I manually inputted all these figures. 
So that is how I was able to compute the difference of the dependent variable. So I'm going to delete this one. That was just to show you what I did. For the lag of the dependent variable, all you need to do is to drop a cell because you are creating just one lag. If you are having two lags, that means you are dropping two cells. Because I'm just using a lag of the dependent variable, all I needed to do was just to drop one cell and copy it all down. The same thing I did for the difference, the lag of the difference uh, dependent variable. You can see here, I just dropped two cells because here there is nothing. So I dropped it up to E4. So again, for us to run the regression, because of the empty cell in E3, Excel will not run. So all we have to do is to move everything that is up here to row 3. So this is where we are starting our regression from. Remember, the lag of the dependent variable is the parameter that we are testing. We want to see whether it's negative or whether it's zero. If it is zero, we cannot reject the null. But if it is negative, then we can reject the null. By negative means the series is stationary without uh, any need for us to difference. So to get started, we'll go to data, data analysis, highlight regression, click OK. Let's clean out what we have there before. To populate the input Y range, I click on DLMPCE, which is a dependent variable in this case. I copy it all down. That's the input Y range box is being populated. I go to input X range. I click on the column D and column E, highlighting both together because those are the two explanatory variables. Make sure that the label box is checked and the confidence interval. I've selected cell D2 for Excel to put in my result. Everything looks good, so I click OK. So here's the result. Our only concern is the outcome of the lag of the dependent variable. Remember that is our null hypothesis. So we want to see the T statistic. And again, the T statistics from this regression does not follow the normal distribution. So we will confirm that vis-a-vis -vis the computed Dickey Fuller statistic, which is the tau distribution. So the value of our t statistics here is minus 1.436. And when we are interpreting the augmented Dickey Fuller, we only consider absolute value. So you don't consider the negative sign. So the tau distribution, for us to know whether to reject or not reject the hypothesis, is given by this. This is from my previous tutorial using the Stata package. My critical value that I'm using is 5%. And the critical value for the tau distribution is minus 1.663. Again, we are not looking at the negative sign. We are only looking at it in absolute form. So do we reject or not reject the uh, null hypothesis? Our conclusion is that Because the absolute value of the computed t statistics is lower than Dickey Fuller's own, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Because LNPCE is non stationary. So that is our conclusion from this estimation. Log of PCE is non-stationary, so we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So let us take the first difference and test again to see whether it's going to be stationary. So the data to test for stationarity is here. And just like I showed you how I computed the difference, is the same way you can compute the difference in column C. Again, look at column uh, cell E4. Because of this empty cell, Excel will not run. So we have to do what we did before, move everything that is up here, that's variable names, 
bring it down here and run the analysis. Our null hypothesis remain unchanged. Here is it. We are testing that theta is zero against the alternative that theta is negative. And this is the model that we are working with. A model that has just the intercept alone, no trend. And we are testing that theta, this one, is equals to zero against the alternative that is negative. So let's go to data. Data analysis. The regression is already highlighted. Click OK. And let's modify what we have in the input Y range box. Let's click column C and fill up the range on that input Y. Copy it to the last observation. Do the same thing for the input X. Let's clean out what is there. Make sure you highlight cell D and E together for the last one. Ensure that the label is checked, confidence interval is checked. And I'm telling Excel to put my output in cell F4. I click OK. Again, the output is out. And the only relevant information that we desire here is this, the lag of the dependent variable. The lag of the dependent variable. From here, we can see that, um, from here we can see that the T statistics is negative 4.716. Against the 5% critical value of minus 1.663. So in absolute terms, we will reject the null hypothesis. So the difference of LNPC is stationary. That's our conclusion. So we conclude that the difference of LNPC E is stationary. Therefore, reject the null hypothesis. So this is how you can easily compute and test for stationarity using the Dickey Fuller method in Excel. So the T statistics here is higher than what the 5% critical value says. So we reject the null. So on the final note, let's see the series now, the graphical plot of the different log of PCE and compare it with what we have before to see whether it's stationary or not. Highlight everything up to the last observation. Go to insert, recommended charts, all charts, line, click OK. So here is a graph of the difference log of PCE. We can see it's stationary at about 0 0.01. It goes up and down, goes up and down, so it exhibits main reversion. We can see it's stable, so such a series can be used for prediction, can be used for forecasting. So indeed, the difference of the log of PCE is stationary. Comparing with what we have before, you can see clearly LNPC is non-stationary, but its difference, its first difference is stationary. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics.